Hello, everybody. Uh, today I'll be talking about something <laughs> way less difficult than the previous talk. I will be talking about uh, video games, in particular about quality of experience assessment for video games by using artificial intelligence. This is part of my work in Huawei, uh, which, by the way, was an amazing experience. So I highly recommend everybody to apply for internship positions there. Uh, so uh, first of all, what, what about the gaming industry? Well, you see, um, during the last few decades, the gaming industry has been observing a very uh, rapid increase in the market share. At a certain point that in 2022, it is expected to reach uh, $200 billion of market value, which is, by the way, more than the film industry in the US, just to give you a uh, perspective on this. At the same time, people are trying to push uh, video games to the Olympics, maybe in a desperate attempt to attract young people to, the, to this kind of events. And of course, when, when we are talking about monies, what we get is uh, internet service providers around trying to offer you uh, some premium plans for gaming, which supposedly provide you excellent gaming experience, which is something questionable. But the thing is that gaming still remains quite an expensive thing uh, because you still need to buy the user equipment, you still need to spend uh, a few grants for your gaming PC. So people at Google and Nvidia say, hey, hold on, we're, we're giving you a new kind of gaming experience. We're introducing uh, Nvidia GeForce Now and Google Stadia, which is our first commercial cloud gaming platforms. So instead of buying a new PC, what you do is you pay us some subscription fee, you buy a game and play the game on your phone. And what we'll do is to take your game and render it on our uh, data centers. And we'll just send you the stream of your game. So you, you'll be just playing on your TV, on your phone, sending the comments to the data center of Google or NVIDIA. And then as a response, you will get the stream of your game which is good, but by the way, just remember that we're still not able to support uh, AAA games, so don't expect the new Witcher or the new Fortnite 5 to be run on our game, on our, on our data centers. We can run some simple games, which is okay. Uh, but the thing is that I'm a network guide, so I don't care about uh, what they do in their data centers from the point of view of marketing. What I care about is um, traffic inside the network. And if you take a closer look at the uh, cloud gaming traffic, what you'll see is that it combines elements of traditional online gaming, such as uh, low bandwidth, because you are only sending some metadata for actions, but at the same time, it requires low delay because your actions must be uh, sent to the server in order to guarantee some kind of interactiveness. At the same time, it has elements of video streaming because it still has to uh, send you a video stream of your game, which requires high bandwidth and but can support high delay. And the thing is that when you mix the two things together, what you get is input lag, which is something new uh, in the gaming industry because traditionally input uh, lag was compensated um, at the user by, by running a uh, like compensation algorithms, but in this case, the user doesn't have any kind of equipment, so you need to manage this. The thing is that uh, in traditional video streaming, the network doesn't care whether you are watching a documentary movie or whether you are watching an action movie with uh, Steven Seagal. In the, case, in the case of games, maybe things will be different because you see, Games in, have different genres. First of all, they have some face-based games like actions, action games, or first-person shooter games. But on the other hand, they have some uh, slow-paced games like strategy, strategy games, card games, or some kind of interactive fiction. And by the way, those games may be composed of different stages. So inside the same uh, first-person shooter game, you, you may have a fast-paced game and a slow-paced, uh, a fast-paced phase and a slow-paced phase. And you see, the latency has different impact of those uh, on those games depend depending on their genre. For example, if you are playing Space Invaders and you have a hundred millisecond latency, 
you will spend most of your time at the title screen dead, basically. While if you are playing farming simulator, I doubt that you will notice a uh, decrease in the harvest of your crops or whatever. So in order to understand the impact of latency on the gains, what we need to do is to perform some quality of experiment assessment. Okay, but how, how do we do it? Well, traditionally what you do is to take a gain, and here we, we encounter our first challenge that how to, how to take a game if we have 25 new games released per day on Steam, if you see here in 2018. So, but let's skip this. We will get to it in, uh, in, a, few in a few moments. Then what you need is um, human subjects. Okay, you take some humans, you make them play the game. But you must pay, you must pay attention to make your human subjects uh, different enough, because if they all, some professional players who play 20 or 24 hours per day, maybe you'll get some results which are not uh, usable for a broader audience. Okay, is better. Uh, then what you need is a controlled environment. So since we're talking about cloud gaming, you need to bring subjects to the lab, because if you make the subjects play online over the wider network, what you have that you will have some inter inter interference from other kind of traffics in the network. So the only thing is to truly isolate your controlled environment is to bring subjects to the lab, which is kind of bad because what we get is combining all those elements is that you obtain noise experimental data because you are not able to find enough human subjects to, to have um, deterministic results. You have coarse grained information because if you make the people play the game, at given, uh, at given latencies, for example, 50 milliseconds, 100 milliseconds, 150 milliseconds, you don't know what's happening in the middle. Then you have no repeatability because people are not able to repeat the same, the same uh, gaming experience, the same gaming pattern that they had before. And most importantly, we have outdated, outdated information because by the time that you found the subject, you set your control the environment, people are not playing anymore Gold Simulator 1, but they are playing Gold Simulator 5. So basically, your work uh, is useless by the is, is useless by the time. And who's guilty here? Of course, humans, because humans are slow; they are not uh, reliable, and they are not able to to provide deterministic results. But here's an idea: let's let's get rid of humans because we hate them. Let's use robots. Let's use bots instead. Well, you can develop a bot for your game, which will be able to play it uh, according to your um, according to the experience that you want to give him, so you, you, you may make bots which are very good at playing video games, bots which are very bad. Uh, but the thing is that this is still kind of expensive because bots are typically developed by the game developers which, are, which have developed the game, and it takes some time to develop them and, of course, money to do, to do so. Uh, what concerns the controlled environment, you can run it in your lab because you don't have humans anymore. So you can simulate the game, simulate the, the network, and simulate, of course, the players. Thing is that, as I told you before, you are, not, you are still not able to stay in touch with the game releases because it takes time to develop both. The outcome is the deterministic results uh, because both of the deterministic fine-grained fine information because you may make, you may make uh, the bots play with any kind of granularity, repeatability, of course, but still get updated information. But what about AI? <laughs> what if we put AI instead? What we use AI instead of bots? Are we still able to um, to keep up with the releases? Is it still expensive? Do we still get updated information? Well, let's see. You see that uh, deep, deep reinforcement learning has been gaining a lot of momentum in the latest uh, years. You have uh, a lot of different algorithms being developed specifically for video games. And at its base, it's very simple. You have a, an artificial agent which interacts with the environment by means of some actions. And what it gets from the environment is a, its state, so its picture of the environment in that moment, and some kind of reward signal, which is which has to be defined. 
The good thing is that by defining this reward signal, you can shape the behavior of the agent. So you can decide that for the agent, it's more, more important to do some kind of task uh, in respect to another. So you can tune his, be his behavior. And if you develop this kind of algorithms, what you uh, must include is active exploration. So the agent will be able to explore the environment uh, all the possible states of the environment, so to optimize the reward, uh, the long-term reward. And it does it by simple trio and error approach. So it doesn't require any kind of supervision and has a very good adaptability, which is cool. Okay, uh, let's do it. So what we did is to consider uh, simple Atari games. Uh, in this case, we considered uh, Sequest, uh, Beam Rider, and Breakout. Uh, we considered one specific algorithm, one specific uh, deep reinforcement learning algorithm, which is DeepQ Networks, uh, DeepQ Network. But we also tried with other different algorithms, um, which is quite simple, but yet very powerful uh, algorithm. So what we did is to train three artificial agents, uh, one respectively for each of the games, and it uh, took less than five hours to reach a superhuman level uh, of performance for those video games. Uh, what's next? We have our AI, let's make it play in our network. Uh, so we, um, we built an emulated network uh, for cloud gaming, which, is, which was characterized by a given frame lag L. Uh, per frame lag probability P lag and some per keystroke drop probability P drop. So our artificial agents are sending the commands to our emulated networks, which then forwards it to the server and the server in turn uh, returns the frames. So what we observed is that um, when you increase the latency, the performance of those three agents drops uh, considerably at the point that around 100 milliseconds, the games are not even playable anymore. Oh, by the way, here I'm using normalized average score for each game, where one is the maximum achievable score with zero latency, and zero is the random uh, score. Uh, the same thing happens for drop probability, but still the drop probabilities, the curves are, are milder. So they are more tolerant to drop probability. And similar things happen for the lag probability. But hold on, I'm talking here about the performance, not the quality of experience. Uh, you see that there are a lot of studies which show that, which show that the uh, performance is closely linked to the quality of experience because inexperienced players uh, usually observe their uh, uh, performance degradation during the quality of performance degradation, quality of experience degradation. While this is not true for um, for professional players, which are able to compensate for the latency, but this is something good because cloud gaming was defined was uh, was developed for casual players, so we are happy with those results. So now that we have this, if we take a closer look, uh, this part of the graph, we will see that Sequest is way more tolerant to latency than Breakout. In this case, its, its performance doesn't decrease at five, uh, 50 milliseconds, while for breakout, while breakout becomes unusable at 50 milliseconds. Okay, so let's go back a little bit. Uh, we were talking about the different network requirements for different games. And what we saw is that uh, for uh, sequence and breakout, we observed these different network requirements and different response to latency. So one thing that we can do, for example, starting from the previous results, is to apply some, um, uh, some smart uh, traffic prioritization inside the network. And in this case, I have uh, two concurrent sessions of uh, sequence and breakout playing in the same network. Uh, one without traffic prioritization, one with traffic prioritization. Uh, in the first case, you see that the performance of breakout is kind of small, while uh, the performance of sequest remains around one, as we saw in the previous graph. While in the case of traffic prioritization, what we can do, for example, is to maximize the average uh, performance of all the game sessions. So in this case, it coincides with strict priority scheduling inside the network. So what we do is to prioritize breakout over sequest 
And what you can see is that the performance of sequence drops to 0.75, around 0.75, but the performance of break, breakout stays at stable one, which is kind of good. So what about future and current work? This, is, this was preliminary work, which will be published at uh, Infocom, a workshop about network intelligence. What we're doing right now? Uh, well, uh, first of all, one may ask itself, does the AI act like uh, real humans? Well, I don't have the answer, but let's find out. If you go on this website, uh, I will ask you to play some games and I will score your performance under some latency and you don't know about the latency. This is a fully controlled environment because the Atari here runs inside your browser. So it's JavaScript, so there's no latency due to the network. So if you please go there and play a little bit, I'll be very happy about this. Uh, the next, Atari is way too trivial. Yes, uh, the thing is that Atari is kind of simple. It's way too casual for a real game. So what we're doing right now is to check in the same data for uh, Doom. And here is a simple dashboard which shows the performance of uh, Doom uh, artificial agents uh, under variable of frame lag and history drop probability and lag probability. So real, real um, time results here. Um, finally, uh, one thing that we're doing very actively right now is the fact that uh, the AI that we train doesn't know about the lag because the AI has been trained without uh, any lag. So what we're doing right now is trying to introduce this notion of AI inside our deep enforcement learning algorithms in order to make it anticipate the present because the AI observes the environment at a given state in the past. So it must learn to anticipate what is happening in the present. So in conclusion, uh, what we did is to propose a methodology for AI assisted game quality assessment, game uh, QOE assessment. We considered some uh, cloud gaming scenarios with different uh, Atari environments. And we performed some analysis of AI in response to network conditions. And finally, we proposed a simple average game score maximization via in-network prioritization. OK, thank you. OK, thank you, Jerma. Very interesting talk. Uh, again, I would ask to the people who is watching to the event to comment on the YouTube video to ask questions. But I see that in the audience, we already have two questions. Okay. So the first one is, how much does the type of, of the game, so maybe MOBA or uh, first person, person shooter, shooter or sports game, influence the training of your AI? Well, uh, the in the case of first-person shooters or uh, MOBA games, well, in the case of first-person shooters, uh, we considered Doom, and it took uh, three days to train to, to, to a reasonable extent. We still used some very uh, easy uh, algorithm, very, very simple algorithms. Uh, here, there are a lot of different algorithms uh, to, for, um, for, for, for first-person shooters. Well, in the case of MOBA, which I think may be uh, similar to StarCraft, we still didn't try it, so we still need to investigate that part. And I, I suppose it would take longer, of course, to train, not five hours as, as for Atari, but we still need to, to check it. Okay, thank you. We have a second question. Do you think cloud gaming will replace consoles in the future? Probably, uh, you still have the issue with the latency. If you're able to guarantee very low latency, as it is happening with 5G right now, which are advocating a one, one millisecond latency, end-to-end -end latency, then yes, then you will be able to play on your TV without any kind of console. I'm pretty sure about this. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. <laughs>